Hello guys, I'm Kat Falk and I'm here today with a new scroller box that I'm gonna open and make something with. Uh, so this one will be a challenge for me, so stay tuned for that. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, I post at least one video every week. And you can also follow me on Twitter or Instagram, or both if you want to. So this is a monthly subscription box that is filled with delicious art supplies and if you also love to try out new supplies there's a link to where you can get one of these down in the description box. If you want to challenge yourself a little more you can do the scroller challenge which is to create something with all the supplies that's in the box. Alright enough talking let's check out the supplies. So the first thing we have is a scroller box sticker and some refreshers. I haven't seen these ones in a while. I remember them always being super hard to chew on. So we have this card that might be a little hint on what we are supposed to do with this month's supplies. This scroller box hand lettering is made by Stephen Bradbury from Manchester, UK. Then we have this card that will give you information about the scroller challenge that I mentioned before. And this month's challenge is to write scroller box. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. And on the other side, there's a list and information about all the supplies that's included in the box. And there's a lot of interesting materials in this one, I think. And the first supply is this Sharpie whiteboard marker that is very, very squeaky. Ooh, it got a chisel nib and it's it smells terrible but depending on how you hold it and tilt the pen you can either get a thinner or a thicker line and next up is this Sig Kurotake brush pen and I have one of these already but you can't have too many because they are awesome uh, I really like them anyway so the pen is filled with ink and the nib is like an actual paintbrush so you just remove this yellow part and then you screw the pen together again and the ink will go down to the nib. And then we have another SIG product and it's a brush H2O. It's quite similar to the one I got in the Art Snacks box but it's a little shorter and it's apparently got a larger brush tip. I'm not sure if I like this or not, I probably need to practice a little more with this. So this is a paintbrush that you fill with water, uh, so you don't have to dip it in the water jar all the time. So it works pretty much the same as this one but without the ink. Next we have this Pentel Touch Brush Sign Pen with the longest name ever. So this one has a very fine and flexible nib. And the ink is apparently non-permanent and water-based. So yeah, it looks very interesting. I'm looking forward to trying this one. And then we have these two Lyra Aqua Brush Duo. And I got one black and one yellow. Of course, yellow is my favorite color, you know. So these ones are double-ended and at one end they got this pointy and flexible brush nib and at the other end they got this smaller bullet nib. Then the last supply in the box is this Koinor watercolor duo in gold and silver. So these ones are metallic watercolors, it sounds super interesting. And it says in the info card that you could try these on darker paper to see them shine. So I might have to pick out some of my colored paper to use this on. So yeah, looking forward to trying these. I've seen others using them and they look fabulous. Then we also have these two hand lettering guidelines, also made by Stephen Bradbury. So you can use this one to practice your lettering skills on, which I might have to do because I suck at hand lettering. So I'm sure you can write directly on these ones or you can put them under a paper and use as guidelines. I don't know if the camera picks up on this, but I can see the lines through the paper. So that's all the stuff in May's scroller box. Let's see if I can use these supplies to do some fancy hand lettering. I first try the supplies on a piece of paper as usual and I really like the Lyra Aqua brush ones and the grey Pentel brush pen. Uh, they were very nice to work with. The Pentel pen nib was flexible but kind of stiff at the same time. I liked it anyway. The metallic watercolor didn't turn out that good on the white paper, but it looked amazing on darker paper, dark blue in this case, so that's what I'm gonna use for this drawing. 
Moving on to the part I dreaded the most and that was doing the actual hand lettering. I never done hand lettering, not for real anyway, and I had to practice a little before I made this video, so it took me a few tries before I managed to create something I was a little happy with. I really enjoyed the metallic watercolor, as I said before, they turned out lovely on the darker paper. It looks really nice and they were fun to work with as well. I filled the paintbrush with water first, but I ended up emptying it again since it felt like the watercolor got diluted because of the water inside the brush, even if I didn't press it at all. I wanted the color to look as opaque as possible, which they did after I emptied the brush. Uh, but the brush itself was very nice to work with, even if the tip were a bit larger, it worked well for detailed work. So as I mentioned, I've never really done hand lettering before, and I was actually a bit nervous doing this challenge, since it's so far away from what I normally do, uh, way outside my comfort zone, so I'm a bit surprised on how well this turned out, and I'm pretty happy with it, and there's still a lot of things I need to practice on, of course, but for a first try I think it's not that bad, let me know what you think. I used the black Lyra brush pen to make some outlines and to clean up the edges a little, but it didn't show up too well on dark paper, obviously. I also used the Kuretake brush pen and it looked a little better since it was more pigmented and laid on top of the paper instead of sinking in. Uh, I used it to add a little bit of detail and shades and it gave some more texture to the whole piece. I always try to include all supplies in the picture when doing these challenges, but the yellow Lyra pen wouldn't really have shown on the paper, and the Sharpie pen I totally forgot about for some reason, so I didn't use that one either. I don't really know how I would have used that in the drawing anyway. I didn't use the grey pencil pen that much, but it worked well to add shading to the letters to make them look less flat. My favorite supply in this box is definitely the metallic watercolors, they were super fun to work with and looked amazing. I'm really hoping to use these ones again. So that's all for now, I hope you liked the drawing and this video. Check out the link below if you are interested in getting a squalor box yourself to try out. And don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment and a like and all that fancy stuff. Thanks for watching and keep drawing my happy cats, bye!